So, this is the definition of the of a game for us uh, to begin with ok. So, a game comprises of the following. You have a finite set here which is called which denoted by n which is called the set of players. Now, for each player or uh, each i in n, you have a set let us call this s i is a set of now for, for the moment I am going to call these strategies and in a few lectures we will more produce a more general term for this, but for the moment let us just call these strategies ok. So, for each player i you have a set of strategies. So, if I if I take say x i in s i this is a particular strategy here a particular strategy of player i. Now, if I put together this uh, this collection x 1 till x n this here you can think of this as some collection or you can think of it as a composite vector uh, comprise with these components whatever however you want to think of it x 1 to x n here is what is called a strategy profile. So, 1, 2, now 3. So, for each i, for each player i, you have a function, let us call this function u i, a function u i that maps this product right to r. So, u i maps the product of s i is to r. What is this? This is essentially saying that for each profile of strat each strategy profile that means each composite vector x 1 till x n uh, the u i produces for me a real number and that u i is what is called the player's utility or payoff uh, multi na various names for this sometimes called utility sometimes called payoff and now u i here is when I when I use the word utility or payoff it effective it connotes that it is something that you uh, that the player gains from. So, this is something that the player is looking to maximize ok. Alternatively you can always flip the sign and uh, of of this u and say, turn it into a cost that he is trying to, or a loss that he is trying to minimize ok. So, so is utility or payoff or let us say and cost. So, if it is utility or payoff the assumption is that he is looking to maximize this that he is looking for the largest possible value of this and if it is a cost then then it, he is looking to minimize this. You put together these three things then what you get is a game. So, a game basically comprises of a set of players n, a set of strategies for each player and a set of you and a collection of utility functions for one for each player. This here is a game ok and as I said we are since uh, we are focusing on non cooperative games are underlying here I need to also alongside all this also specify what is what are the what are the assumptions regarding communication and so on. But uh, so, because we are focusing on non cooperative games the it is uh, I am going to assume implicitly that there is basically no co no communication are being allowed between the players ok. So, this is an this is a non cooperative game with these specifications with this set of players this set of strategies and these payoff functions is this clear. Now, uh, as since some amount of convex optimization and so on will be involved it is a it is it is usually convenient to uh, whatever is the function it is convenient to minimize it rather than maximize ok. So, uh, coming from uh, you know usually uh, in a in a control or machine learning and so on language we have we have a cost or a loss that we are trying to minimize 
uh, whereas in the social sciences they tend to look at uh, you, something a payoff that a player is looking to maximize. These are just uh, conventions, we will stick to the minimize convention, all right. So, now this is what this is the formal definition of a game. So, now question is okay, how are we going to solve this? Okay, so what are we and to begin with what are we solving for? By now again be uh, let us be clear, I am not asking you how to compute. So, when I so when I say solve, I do not mean compute something, okay. Compute comes after you tell me what is it that is to be computed. Right. So, so when I, I am asking for solving, I am asking, okay, what is what should be the solution? Yeah. So, what is should be now? If I just give you this and I tell told you the assumption that this is a non-cooperative game, I want a I want something that I should say should be able to say is a solution of this. Right. So, if there was only one player involved here. Okay, then the problem would become that well then the problem would be that there is one player who has one, who has a set of strategies and a payoff function which he is trying to maximize, then it is merely an optimization problem, right. And there there is a natural notion of a solution, the natural notion is the optimal value of that of that of that uh, of that particular problem. You look for the global optimizer or if you are uh, otherwise look for a local optimizer etcetera. These are the natural solution concepts concepts from which we derive our solutions. It is a different matter how we go about computing them, what algorithms we have and so on. But the logic is that well it is sort of uh, self evident that that is what you are looking for, you are looking you are looking for a solution of the optimization problem. Now, you do not have one optimization problem, but each player has an optimization problem, right. Essentially, there are n optimization problems and they are all interlinked. The question is how do you solve? or solve this. And again, how do you solve means what should be considered as a solution of this of this of this thing if this particular thing that we have just built. Hmm. It is a function of the strategies of each player, okay. But what properties should that function satisfy? Without some without help from someone else, okay. Okay, interesting. Any other? Yeah. So, so here, uh, one second. Just let me answer. Uh, since this point has been brought up, a game as formulated doesn't necessarily have a winner or a loser. Okay, mm -hmm. like this is all there is to a game. Uh, this has we. Okay, there could, of course, you can take certain special cases in which there would you can define such a thing as a winner. So, for example, if you know. If the payoff reaches a certain value, then you win. Okay, something like that. That could be. But here, this is a far more general setting. There is no, no, uh, you know, predefined notion of a winner or anything like that. Yeah. Sorry, someone else was saying something. Mm, okay. With what distribution? Mm -hmm. Okay, but the opponent would be doing the same. So, okay, so here this is here is another important point about games and about how we study games. Okay, now again, once I pose this particular thing to you and I say this is the game and we want to be able to solve it, when we go about coming up with a logic for solving a game like this, we have to first fix a point of view. Okay point of view meaning that whom are we solving this for and who is who is solving this game. Is it uh, is it a particular player in this situation who is solving the game? Are we solving say for example, for player 1 or for player 2 or for player n? Are we solving for all of them together? So, who is I mean this is being solved from whose point of view? So, this is an important thing right. So, especially particularly when it comes to applying game theory, when you apply game theory say for example, you want to apply game theory uh, uh, to a security situation where you want to advise uh, say the security of an airport about how it should be deploying its uh, troops to, pr to protect the various you know terminals and so on in the airport. 
are you thinking are you doing this from the point of view of the security company or the security agency or are you doing this from the point of view of the of a potential attacker or are you doing this from a completely different other point of view so this the, the so this is part this is again this is not uh, something that uh, that is there in this problem definition this is again part of the our the approach that we want to take as far as solving a situation like this is concerned so it's 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 a, it's a human choice we are making that we will take the view of not any particular player in the game but but the but the point of view of an observer of the game okay if you remember i i said initially that we are trying to develop something like a law, like a bunch of laws so i should be thinking of these players as more like particles that are evolving according to a certain law of motion the law of motion is that they each looks to may uh, maximize his payoff or minimize his cost whatever and then there is this interaction between them that their costs are interdependent uh, as an observer of this particular system seeing them seeing this particular system play out in the lab i want i would be i would want to know okay how should i be solving this or what should be the final notion of a solution of this so the point of view we take in game theory is not of any one particular player but that of an observer of the game so we do not do things like you know put ourselves in the shoes of the players imagine what the other player would do and so on we we take the neutral point of view of of observing what uh, of of an observer of the game in which players are equipped with a certain set of assumptions and a certain set of capabilities we ask okay what should happen what should they do or what must they do okay so the viewpoint is that so viewpoint taken in game theory is that of an observer of a game so so you will soon see in a few uh, in a few lectures from now there could very well be games in which a player is getting bluffed for instance okay by another player and that if you were in that player's position you would play differently from whereas you would reason about the situation very differently if you were an observer if you were an observer you would see that he could get bluffed but if you were in fact that player you would avoid getting bluffed okay so this po the point of view matters it leads to very different uh, sort of ways of applying game theory and ways of uh, sifting through the the logic of game theory okay so the observe so he here, here so we are going to stick to the observer view point now if you are observers of this game so okay now again we are we are back back to the same question we are observers of this game same, like we like the prisoners dilemma we are observing that there are these two prisoners with equipped with these options and these these uh, these payoffs what must they do and more generally i mean now now that i have written out a general game you should tell me what should be the way to reason about this so the main the the uh, so one of the main landmarks in the theory of games is this is the methodology or the logic for reasoning about situations like this uh situations of with uh, involving non cooperative games and that uh, and in fact even prior to that the recognition that that how you reason depends on whether the game is cooperative or non cooperative or whether it is non cooperative or non non cooperative okay so all of that that observation came from uh, the from uh, from nash's thesis and so nash basically said that if you have a non cooperative game then what you should be doing is basically solving it using this particular concept and that's what i'm going to define now so the nash equilibrium is a, strate a strategy profile let's call it x1 star to xn star is a nash equilibrium 
if the following holds. If u i of x 1 star to x n star. So, I as I said I have assumed that u i uh, player is trying to minimize. So, this is Okay, so u i of x 1 star to x n star is less than equal to u i of. So, I will introduce a notation here. Okay, less than equal to this for I will explain what this means for all x i in x i and and for all i. Again. Now, what does this notation here mean? This notation here stands for x i. So, x i comma x minus i star this notation essentially stands for the following vector. So, x minus i star is the the uh, the, strat the part of the strategy profile which in which I have taken all the other players except for player i. So, it ok. So, I have x 1 star x 2 star dot 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 x i minus 1 star and now in place of player i, I in place of the starred one I am going to insert this x i here. So, this is x i comma x i plus 1 star dot dot x n star. So, x i comma x minus i star is essentially this composite vector it where I have taken the starred values from the first for all players except for player i and in place of player i's strategy I have put in this x i that is chosen from here. Okay. So, that is what that is what that is the notation for x i comma that is what this notation means x i comma x minus i star. It is a notion notation specialized for game theory because this kind of a thing com comes up all the time. Here. Ok. So, now let us see what Nash is basically saying. So, what Nash is saying is that we should be looking at a, a point x 1 star to x 10 star is called a Nash equilibrium if the following holds. So, what what do we have on the left hand side? On the left hand side you have the the cost of player i when this strategy profile is played, when the players play x 1 star to x n star, the n players all of them play the starred value. What I have on the right is the strategy profile uh, is is the pay, uh, is the cost of player i when the strategy profile changes to x i comma x minus i star. That means, all the other players stick to the the starred value, the starred uh, part of the the or uh, they, they continue to play the strategy uh, the starred strategy, but player i switches to x i ok. So, what this is saying is that the the uh, a player a player i is here this in what this inequality is saying is that a player i is better off playing the starred value than he is by switching to a some other x i provided the others stick to their starred values ok. And this holds for every x i and moreover this holds not just for this particular player i that you have chosen this is symmetric it is holds for all players. I. So, so every player i prefers to stick to his starred value starred strategy provided the others do not switch from uh, do not deviate from their own start value. So, no player has an incentive to deviate from his uh, from his strategy from the profile provided no one else deviates from their own uh, strategy in the profile ok. So, this is this is called the Nash equilibrium. Now, why 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 is this such a such a big deal? Why why is this uh, uh, you know I said this is a landmark in the theory of games and why why is that the case? The reason is basically this essentially what Nash said gave gave us is a is a essentially the a a watertight way of now reasoning about games. What is this situation? What is this inequality really saying? What this inequality is saying is that if I want to call if I want a point x 1 to x if I want a profile x 1 star to x n star to be considered a solution then this must hold. What should must what must hold? Well, no player should have an incentive to deviate unilaterally from his from that profile. So, assuming the others stick to the their strategies in the profile I would not want to deviate from my own strategy from the profile. 
now why is this correct or reason why is this uh, logical for uh, for a non cooperative game the reason it's logical is because see once a game is non cooperative okay once a game is non cooperative only unilateral deviations are feasible there is no way for a pair of players or a group of players to to collective to you know form a unit and then deviate together you know like it happened with the shiv sena for example you know you cannot have that kind of a a, a possibility where a bunch of players deviate uh, uh, come together and deviate together okay. what what is happening here so in a non cooperative setting when there is no communication is allowed between players only unilateral deviations are feasible if only unilateral deviations are feasible well then what it means is if i if i if any point has to be considered a final solution then it has to be stable against such deviations because if not then the adjustments process is still going on it whatever you are at is not a final is not a solution anymore is not an outcome anymore so this is essentially a necessary condition for any any profile to be considered an outcome if it has to be an outcome it has to it has to be a nash equilibrium right because otherwise that if if it is not if it is not a nash equilibrium then it means that there is at least one player who under the communication constraints can deviate from it and in, if that is the case then whatever you were considering earlier from that point is not an outcome anymore right something else could potentially become an outcome the adjustment process continues uh, you know the whatever the reasoning process continues and and uh, and maybe there is some other outcome so what this basically does is essentially it gives us clarity on how we should be thinking about about non cooperative situations non cooperative situations you ought to think of them as something where players if they could unilaterally deviate they uh, they would so if you want a final solution or if you want anything to be considered as an outcome then it has to be of the kind where unilateral deviations are not profitable for the player anymore all right so this this is a, this is the uh, this is the nash equilibrium of a game okay and so this is the solution this is basically the most popularly uh, applied widely applied solution concept uh, in any non cooperative situation you will you will uh, you know as you go forward you will see how you know the kind of amazing properties it has and so on and how much it is able to explain about about uh, strategic interactions and so on but for the moment let us just go back to the prisoner's dilemma and let's see what is the nash equilibrium for the prisoner's dilemma yeah yeah because in a non cooperative game only unilateral deviations are feasible if you if you allow the, if you take the same situation in which you have a cooperative game in which play, a bunch of players could communicate and say well as a group we want to move out move from our from our present from a certain from one sub profile to another sub profile right that would be a different game and that would be a different type of situation and it would lead, a, lead to a different type of concept in fact uh, the uh, coalition formation games which is a, a, a kind of cooperative game has is there you solve the game using exactly these lines of reasoning okay the, the about what kind of coalitions are stable well stable the coalitions that are stable are the ones where uh, in which no subset of players can actually deviate from but here because there is this is a non cooperative setting only individuals can individual player can deviate yeah so what is the nash equilibrium of the of the prisoner's dilemma 2 2 right so testify testify is the nash equilibrium of the prisoner's dilemma and the reason for that is is that if you see what what how are we how are we arguing here we need to argue that assuming the other player plays this his component from this profile i would not want to deviate from my component right so assuming the other player plays testify i would not want to assuming b plays testify a would not want to uh, switch to silent and likewise if assuming a plays testify b would not want to switch to silent now this game is symmetric and that's why this computation is this uh, this is very easy 
okay and uh, uh, you know uh, but of course in general the, the number of strategies that players would have could be different for each player and so on all right so let's take another example uh, so here's another example uh, this is also symmetric this is a, a, an example where there are two hunters okay hunter 1 and let's say hunter 2 and they are both poised to hunt down a deer They, they are both poised to hunt down a deer. I mean, they let us assume that they are sort of at two different, uh, two different, uh, they, there is a deer in some central location and they are both viewing that deer from, uh, from uh, two sides. They cannot communicate with each other. I mean, of course, there could be visual cues and this and that, but let us, let us assume that is not possible. They cannot communicate with each other. They are both seeing this poised to hunt a deer, ready to hunt a deer. But then suddenly there is this option that a rabbit runs by, okay. And then there is the possibility to also hunt a rabbit. So, and what is the dilemma? The dilemma is the following: that a deer is much bigger and much takes much more effort to hunt. Okay, so if both go for the deer, they'll be able to hunt down the deer, and they would each get, let's say, a payoff of two. But if only one of them goes for the deer and the other goes for the uh, goes for the rabbit, the fellow who is going for the deer will not get will not be able to hunt the deer alone. Okay, so the one who is going for the rabbit gets gets the rabbit, but the one who is going for the deer doesn't get the deer. Okay, so and if both go for a rabbit, the rabbit is much smaller than the deer, and so what they will each get is uh, you know whatever half. Okay, so now again, what is the reasoning here? So, one thing you will notice right away is that this is not a situation like the prisoner's dilemma where there is one strategy that is uniformly better than the other one. It is not true that regardless of what the other guy does, it is better for me to go for the deer, right. In fact, this is more akin to the coordination problems that I was just talking about. We, we are both better off if we coordinate. But coordinating on a better thing is better for both. What is the what is the logic here? Again, we do not want to get into the trap of trying to predict what players will do because we again do not know what they will each do because that gets into a whole bunch of other issues like, like, like how hungry each hunter is, how selfish they are and so on and so forth. Uh, the, the amount of trust they have in the other individual and so on. That is not our uh, mandate that is not our uh, competence. Uh, what we have to do is come up with a bunch of reasoning rules by which we can say what what is the logical outcome. Mm. Not necessarily, and the reason is because the whatever the other player does arises, uh, you know, your distribution of what the other player does, for example, is, is part of the strategic uh, posture of the other player. So, it is not, uh, the point is, you may see, this is a, this is a temptation in games all the time, right, that instead of trying to say, well, I can think from the point of view of a player and I say, okay, maybe the other hunter 30 percent of the time goes for the deer and 70 percent of the time goes for the rabbit. And then based on that, I will try to, uh, I will try to decide what I, I should do. But remember that 30 and 70 is not a phenomenon, is not just some fact of nature, it is part of his decision. How often he should be going for the rabbit versus deer is part of his strategy. All you have done by just bringing in these probabilities is just lifted the same problem to the space of probabilities. Now each player has to decide not whether to go for rabbit or to go for deer. But rather, how often he goes for rabbit, and or with what probability he goes for rabbit versus what he goes, for, whether uh, as opposed to deer. So, this this uh, you know trying to model the other player using some probabilistic model, basically just gets you to one uh, the same reasoning um, sort of uh, conundrums that you had even in the strategy space. Okay, you just need but so. 
you have the same issues just in a different space. Look at, I mean, look at the uh, classic case of uh, of the Normandy li landings in Normandy, right? So you could, you uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, during the World War there was this uh, uh, this very uh, epoch-making event where uh, where the Allied forces landed in France uh, to liberate France and uh, from uh, from Germany uh, from uh, which was occupied by Germany at that time. There were they picked two possible locations for landing on the co on the northern coast of France. One was called the name is Normandy, the other is Calais. The Germans also knew that these were the two potential landing locations. All right. What they did not know was where they would where they would actually land. Okay. You could say, well, I do not know where they would land, but I think there is. I have a certain model based on which I. I think that that is where they are likely to come, but where they are likely to come depends uh, and how well you will succeed depends also on what you are planning to do. Just like you are making a model about, just like the Germans were making a model about where the allies would land, allies would be making a model about how, how the Germans would, where the Germans would keep their defense. You are effectively just elevated the problem to deciding how should we distribute our, our troops. Uh, rather than trying to decide which where we should be keeping our troops, so that is all there is. Uh, the, the the this this thing only changes this particular flavor. Now, to be uh, to be fair, there is there is another type of uh, uh, a class of games called repeated games where things tend to get a little more intricate. Where uh, where we are where we are playing this game not just once but multiple times. Okay, but with the knowledge that this is being played multiple times, and then you can try to sort of bake in some of the issues, some of the things that you have in mind. But again, this is for the first lecture. We are that is it's too complicated for uh, to get into that. Okay, yeah. So, what's the what's the logic? Hmm. 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 Ah, then that's a very different game. That's a very different game because there, the, what there, uh, that's part of the assumptions. Then that you know certain things about the other player. Yeah. So this the assumption here, uh, the way I have stated this game, uh, you know, in this here is that there is no such information all you know is this so in fact in fact the I, an important thing is okay you, uh, which some of you should have asked me before what do players actually know right so these players are choosing their actions without communicating with each other right but what do they know well the only thing that they know is this table Okay, so in the case of the prisoner's dilemma, they know this table that this is what has been offered. They are being they are choosing their actions without the knowledge of what the other player is doing. Okay, so I, as good as simultaneously, so they, are, they so they do not know what the other player uh, is doing. In the in the Germany in the World War example, essentially we do not know where the where the allies are going to land. Okay, if that is known, then that's a very different game. Or if that is known even with some noise, that is a very different game. Or if the even if I or if I know even that there is a certain probability with which they are likely to land, that is also a very different game. That is not the game that is being discussed. No, 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 it is a no, 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 it is not. See the that so, so information changes the character of the of a game. So if I know, so, uh, if I know that you know say for example there is a point of no return after which the allies are going to land in a particular location right then that's a very different game my uh, how i strategize will change very different so let's come back to this then players know this table they know that each player wants to get the maximum payoff they also know that this is uh, how the uh, 
uh, the, the payoffs of deer and deer and rabbit and so on are, 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 you know, this is what the values are. Now, how do we, what is the logic for this? So, you cannot obviously there is no strategy here which is which dominates the other strategy which means that regardless of what the other guy is doing this is always better that kind of strategy is not does not exist. But we can try to reason about this through the Nash equilibrium. So, if you see essentially what Nash is saying is whatever is the final you know each guy each player would think 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 okay decide okay should I go for deer should I go for rabbit etc etc whatever is the final if a, if at all there is a resolution of this as if we were observing these two hunters what they would do is what they ought to do is that either both go for deer or both go for rabbit okay now how do, why is that the case so if you look at the if you look at let's say deer deer now deer deer is an ash equilibrium here because assuming the other guy is going for deer i would want to continue to play deer okay Likewise, rabbit rabbit is also a Nash equilibrium because if the other guy is going for the rabbit, it does not make sense for me to try and get the deer because I would not be able to get the deer alone. Okay, so, it is better for me to stick to rabbit and deer rabbit is not a Nash equilibrium or rabbit deer is not a Nash equilibrium. So, there are two Nash equilibria in this game. Okay, uh, deer deer is a Nash equilibrium, rabbit rabbit is also a Nash equilibrium. Let us complete with uh, today's lecture, conclude today's lecture with one just this global picture. So, essentially if you want to position position a non-cooperative game theory and you could you could position it in the following way if you here you can talk think of the single player setting and this is the multiple player players setting single player and multiple player. Now, the, f the, s the, the first setting and the kind of games that we have seen so far is what is what are called static games. Static games is when where both uh, where all players where no player has any information about anything else apart from what he the game what he starts off with in the game. So, he does not know what the others have done does not know what else has happened and so on if anything else if any other evolution has happened and so on he does not have any such information those are what are called static games. So, player just plays once and with the same inf with a with a sort of a null information except with only the information about the uh, the uh, payoffs of the players. Those are called static games. Now, in the static setting if it is just one player or it just reduces to optimization and if it is uh, if it is multiple players then it leads to static game theory. On the other hand, if you if there are if if the setting if the setting is dynamic, which means that there is there is a either a time evolution or there is a an aspect of information and so on, then in that case the one player case reduces to is what we know as optimal control. Optimal control with under various names stochastic optimal control or whatever and the uh, in the in the in the case of multiple players it leads to what is called dynamic game theory so my effort is going to be to quickly run through this so that you are you are familiarized with the basics and then then we will spend about 70% of the course on dynamic games.